We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all, all united. united. Welcome all to a session that we will try to take over uh, together now. And... Uh, Let's try to uh, make good use of our free speech here. And uh, so my name is Niels Brock. I work with DW Academy, also with uh, Rhizomatica, Lognet, uh, local community networks. And I think from this perspective, free speech is uh, very dear to us. And we are looking a lot into how uh, or what does free speech mean from a community level perspective. Um, but uh, first of all, I think the idea would be to hear the people who were supposed to talk here um, on today's panel. If there is nobody else in the room who would like to say something about the dynamic or want to do a presentation, improvised one. Or should we start with the with the panelist? Okay, so um, uh, I would like you to present yourselves. Uh, so we uh, cannot do this favor. Uh, who would like to to start from those people who are already online attending? Then I would like to welcome our friend from uh, Free uh, University Moscow. Uh, maybe you can share with us a little bit what free speech means to you in in, in these days. Uh, yeah, uh, actually, I wanted to listen, but uh, I'm, I'm want to raise some concerns uh, because uh, internet uh, made speeds uh, much faster. And uh, usually, when we were talking about free speech, we were talking about freedom of press, so possibility to print something and pin to the cathedral's door, or a possibility to walk out and express yourself. But internet changed this situation uh, really dramatically uh, because uh, nowadays uh, everyone is, uh, is in your backyard. So uh, you have a nice comfy backyard with barbecue and friends, but also uh, uh, Republicans and Democrats from United States came to your backyard in Europe. Uh, Nazis uh, and... Uh, uh, Antifa also came to your backyard and anyone wants to express themselves in a place which you're uh, expected to be calm uh, and yours. Uh, and actually we need to understand what to do this because uh, governments in most cases, uh, you know, that's not DG, even Euro very European regulation tries to regulate the public space. Uh, in Russia, we have illegal and illicit content, blocking, marking, whatever you can imagine. Uh, uh, some social networks are policing uh, and moderating content automatically. Uh, the, the funniest, uh, because they try to protect um, uh, some minority groups for, from harassment, but it also affects uh, freedom of speech. Uh, an example from Russia, for example, uh, is like a people uh, with a certain family names, uh, which sounds like uh, offensive um, uh, definition of Ukrainians got banned uh, just because they have such family name. Uh, it was done automatically. Okay, they were restored, like famous football player in Russia. They was restored, but it was something affecting it. Uh, so one, one issue is that everyone is speaking at your backyard. Another issue of a freedom of speech is that tech companies and governments tries, you to, tries to protect you from this. Uh, and we can't find balance easily. And I really want to hear from you, from, uh, from uh, your community, your status on what, how do you see it? We can find solution, but at least we need to speak and exchange opinions. 
Yeah, good point. So for those who came late, uh, the moderator of the um, session did not show up and the panelists online were also non-responsive at the beginning. So we somehow took over the session. And I don't know if there's any panelists available from the uh, original presenters, not yet. Then maybe uh, sharing or giving this question uh, to those who are here, what are your experiences with uh, free speech in uh, digital areas? Who would like to share an experience or an example or... Um... Yeah, please, please come. We have a number of mics. Uh, but... Yes, so um, I'm Xavier Brandao, so I, I work for um, a network uh, of collective of citizens uh, or of NGOs based mostly in Europe, but also in other countries in the world. What we do is counter speech. Um, and what we see online uh, in digital spaces is that speech is not that free, even in uh, democracies because a lot of people are being targeted, are being attacked. Uh, and if we want a, a real free speech, we should have uh, every category of population should have uh, access to public debate and to digital spaces and public spaces um, we, under the same terms. And what we see is that it's not the case. It's, it's really a minority. Um, minority of people who are more, um, let's say, assertive, more aggressive, more violent, who have uh, the, the floor and have the space, uh, you know, to, 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 um, to, to discuss. So um, it, it's, it's a bit illusory at the moment to say that digital spaces are completely free, let's say in France, for example, because a lot of people are self-censoring and there's there's a really a majority of people who do not participate who never write anything uh, uh, put up content or, or you know write comments or you know discuss online so i think uh, we we need to reconsider our definition of, of free speech uh, and uh, assess the situation and um, make digital spaces safer uh, you know in order to to uh, uh, achieve the, that goal. And do you have any findings or suggestions how to improve this? Because uh, this is like uh, similar what what he mentioned. So there are the the, uh, the haters who are taking the space, and uh, so then don't leave room for others to talk. But how can you incentivate people to to express themselves in digital spaces? Yeah. So so I think it's it's a matter of feeling safe and being safe. Uh, so who enforce, uh, enforces the safety? There's, of course, regulation from the government. There's uh, the participation of the platforms. And it's not at the moment uh, like, um, yeah, regulating themselves. They, they don't have incentives uh, to regulate themselves, at least not economic, because it's, it makes money to uh, let hate and misinformation uh, proliferate so that's that's a big concern so i guess all the actors should be involved you know when you're in a bar for example if you have a minority of guys who are attacking other other people or aggressing them verbally you would have you know uh, the the manager or the owner of the bar who would say something you would have the other clients for example you would have the staff so there is so uh, peer pressure, there is social pressure, there is a control, and th there is, you know, th there is a frame. And, and this frame, we don't find it always on digital spaces. So I think we need to empower maybe, maybe see what's, what's happening in Wikipedia, what's happening on so certain social media where you have, um, you know, people who have the capacity to organize, to moderate, to allow access, to or to to not allow access to people who are uh, you know verbally violent and and so on. So uh, I guess it's it's it requires the participation of, of every level. You know. Thank you. But, uh, who will be those manager who will moderate or organize? 
uh, because a lot of people came not from Western European countries, but where the managers are good. A lot of people came from countries where managers are bad, uh, where they are definitely abusing this, their possibilities against minorities. Uh, and uh, internet in this case allows an express definite and laws of, of expression of everyone. So, but your uh, your opinion can be lost or by automatic moderation, or by flood of fake information, or it could be removed not by corporational uh, automatic moderation, but by content removal by government. Uh, and uh, when the uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights was written, uh, uh, there, there was no such media like internet, such universal, such fast, but also allowing such moderational capacities. Uh, what to do? Should, should, should we change Universal Declaration of Human Rights? Should we make a purchase to it? Uh, or should we create recommendations for illegal or illicit content or something like this? Yeah, so it, it's just a, a suggestion. Um, so if there are other people with other ideas, uh, I'm, I would be really glad to to hear them. Uh, this is so for me, for example, I've been I'm one of the co-founders of the French speaking group, uh, which is part of these groups, uh, these I am here groups. Uh, and what we've seen, because we, we are doing dealing with hate speech, you know, with discussion, public debate every day in comment sections. So we, we see what's happening on Facebook. We know less the other social media or the other internet spaces where uh, th there is a discussion. But what, what we see is um, that um, th there is people are able, if you, if you give them the possibility, you know, to, to I, I, I don't know, like it, it, it all comes down from the dem to democracy. Like I believe in democracy, what we do also with I am here, the other um, uh, people, activists who are part of this network, believe in democracy. So it, it boils down to that, basically. It's like, how do you uh, vote and how do you elect in a fair, fair elections, you know, people who could be the moderators uh, of the group uh, and, and could... Um, and uh, could uh, you know moderate the, the social network for example uh, are you yeah you, you you try to 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 promote that to foster this kind of uh, civic tech you know we're talking about democracy but how do we bring democracy in digital spaces so um and and yeah there, there are examples to, to take from uh, wikipedia for example it's, it's really a community-led initiative and so all, all these things I think we need more bottom-up initiatives. Uh, the role of the government is super important, of course, but as you said, the, every government should respect, uh, you know, the international, the, the universal declaration of rights. So that's, that's the common denominator, that's the minimum one. So yeah, I, I, I think there's this discussion to, to have, um, not everything, should be in the hands of the government, um, but there, there is a need for regulation. There is a need of what's, what's illegal offline should be legal online. So, you know, you, you cannot com commit a crime in the streets. So why could you commit a crime in a digital space? So it's, it's, it's a complex question, but I hope uh, that's a part of the answer. Okay. Well, Thank you. And opening up again, I think to, to all of us who are here, I don't know who would like to also share an uh, example or experience. Until now, we were talking about spaces that were taken by. Yeah, okay. Please. Yeah. And please sit here also. I think is. Uh, well, I think, yeah, those questions are like really complex. I'm Vladimir Cortez from Article 19. Uh, this is kind of a deja vu in the same place with the, <laughs> with the, with the people. Uh, but I, I'm coming from Mexico and in Latin American region, 
just like recently the Inter-American Human Rights Commission, they pointed out and say, we are in an inflection point on freedom of expression on the internet. And they are making this big call and big consultation with civil society and different actors on, yes, we have standards, we have like human rights standards, we have inter-American uh, human rights standards. We have a such uh, like more like stronger protection to freedom of expression if we compare it to Europe because of the history that we have and, and how we have built our uh, democracies. And we have like certain principles, like uh, you cannot uh, have like a, a, a previous censor and some other uh, uh, thresholds and some other uh, standards that really protects uh, freedom of, uh, of expression. But yes, there are like new challenges. Disinformation is one of the challenges. Hate speech is, is another uh, of, of the challenges, but we have to, to see this in, the, in light of the cultural uh, backgrounds, the linguistical backgrounds, and then we jump to, uh, to content moderation and how, for example, social media companies are not taking into account this language diversity and they are just making the moderation, for example, I, I don't know, there is like 80% or 70% of Facebook moderation, it's in English. And uh, it was like quite, uh, like what we are, we're seeing in Mexico is like one indigenous community radio, they were like publishing something in their language in Zapoteco. And it's like, oh, they take down my, the things that I was uh, saying just because it's in another language. They really like don't understand. So I think there must be, and now it's like the part of the discussion, if we need like these new standards or we have like this higher thresholds to protect freedom of expression as a, a democratic element and as a democratic piece for, uh, for societies. But how do we see in light of these uh, new phenomena, all these uh, changes that we are seeing? And I think from my perspective, there are like three or like at least like two ways. One, I believe in oversight, in how the multi-stakeholder oversight of companies and governments can somehow like make this, this balance to guarantee free speech, to guarantee due diligence, to be able to sometimes appeal when you really think that a social media company is taking down illegitimately your, uh, your content or wrongly, it's they're like taking certain decisions uh, to reinforce transparency and accountability on the way they're, uh, they're acting on the explainability of how their algorithms are like working. Uh, perhaps not from a technical perspective, but like to really understand how they are uh, working. And the second point, I think there might be also a chance to move on to a decentralization of content moderation uh, on, on bundling these uh, big powers of social media companies uh, and start like creating uh, different uh, companies or different uh, ways in which someone will host the content but some others will provide a certain specific services, for example, for content moderation. Uh, and then you, you start like uh, reducing somehow like the power of, of these big companies and really having this approach on protecting freedom of expression at the same time of tackling uh, hate speech, disinformation and, and, and some other uh, uh, issues that may come, come up from, from this perspective. So just throwing some ideas uh, around it and, uh, and recognizing that, yes, there is like a big challenge. Uh, I would say like freedom of expression. Yes, it's not an absolute right, but we have to be really very careful on when we are talking about certain like restrictions, because sometimes there are like governments that use this to uh, persecute journalists or to uh, silence, dis dissent, and critical uh, voices. So yeah, so if, if everyone also wants to <laughs> add to, to this uh, complexity, it will be really great. I think we've been hanging out too much because I wanted to say something really similar. I also had the point with the languages because I think that's something we need more to be more inclusive and I need to be taller. Um, <laughs> I, no, it's okay, I can take it. Thank you. 
Okay, that's fine. Um, I had two examples from one from a colleague in Lebanon. So because, yes, as you said, um, I think Facebook has 80% in English and Arabic has been censored, I think, uh, 50% more than other languages because they don't have the bots, for example, to 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 read the Arabic. So they're just easily censored at the beginning. And I have other examples from Ethiopia where it happened with local languages. So I think this is a really good example to see um, we need better monitoring uh, from social platform. We need more engagement with the, from social platform. And I thought your um, decentralization was a good idea, but um, also we need more regulation for private companies. I know that's not new, that's nothing new, but I think these two examples, I just wanted to add. I had more, but I think I can just say, thank you, Victor, you, uh, Vladi Vladimir. Vladimir, thank you for your comments. Okay, anyone else would like to add to this or uh, has uh, further questions or remarks on what was said? I don't know if anybody's online now, also from the from the panelists for scene or are we online? Is this going out? Yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> we are online. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, cool. Uh, well, uh, while you are thinking, I, I have also a question or kind of a comment uh, that I brought to this session that was how far freedom of speech is also related to access. So if you say uh, to, to express yourself freely in a digital space means in the first place also that you sh there should be the possibility to, to have access and to move around. So language is something, but there are preconditions that are uh, more related to freedom of speech maybe than before. But if we uh, think back, it's a bit, a bit the same way. So you can uh, stand up and speak at the corner of, uh, of the street to people who come by, but uh, this won't be the same thing as uh, talking on the radio, uh, for instance, and you will reach another audience. So uh, how is also freedom uh, of speech related to this access? And uh, maybe also if you want to share some examples or experiences uh, how uh, this relation was affected in the time of pandemic so this would be uh, yeah of, of my interest but uh, please also put other questions or previous people here said uh, because there was this uh, motive that uh, I think emerged from every uh, everything that uh, from everyone that we should find some Democ democrat democratic way to maybe uh, to control in a way what what people say but in to find a way to democratically express ourselves uh, by the way my name is marcel i'm a university student in university of gdańsk uh, i'm in my last year of journalism uh, and uh, there is, I had this uh, class with a guy who was uh, a director of the one of the most popular uh, Polish uh, site, website, information website. It's called Virtualna Polska. Uh, and he said that every time that they, for example, published an article about Israel, they had to uh, disable comments because it was so much hate that it was impossible to moderate at all because people uh, in the internet don't don't behave like uh, in real life so for example here no one uh, would would like express those opinions but with anonymity uh, they would okay but there is this uh, site probably most people know it it's reddit and it has this uh, this uh, mechanism of uh, controlling uh, the comments uh, that uh, it, it doesn't have like or, or it has only likes and dislikes and they are scored as points so uh, if you have a higher balance like if you have five uh, likes and three dislikes then you have two points and uh, the comments with a lot of dislikes are in a way disabled from the conversation so they they stop popping up this this is in a way democratic way of of doing this but uh yeah but uh it's in a way limits free speech because not everyone can say but uh, what they like but uh, <laughs> you don't have hate comments i i think because more 
uh, let's assume that most people in these sites are no normal, so they don't uh, condone uh, hate speech. Uh, okay, and uh, this mechanism doesn't work in Facebook, for example. Facebook doesn't have, like, I don't think, any way to dis express dissatisfaction. You have these reactions which can be like they 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 don't work uh, they aren't strictly negative because you can get angry about a uh, news that angers you but the news itself isn't hate hate speech so as a like a, a thought experiment i would like to propose this way of uh, limiting uh, comments by democratically voting on them and if they reach some threshold of negative uh, points they are taken out or they are just hidden and you have to agree to to see the the hidden uh, comments okay so that was let me respond to this yeah uh, uh first of all um, such uh looking like democratic way of, of resolving conflicts or hate speech actually doesn't work because uh or nearly on technological uh ways uh of realizing democracy or decision of which opinion should be stated uh, doesn't work well. It's very well known since well classical forums uh, because uh, if uh, one of the sides becomes more technologically advanced, uh, they will bring what be called uh, bots or automated decisions. So that they they will find mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. voices for uh, their opinion. So. The general concern, and, and I think that we should write it as an outcome of our session, that um, any automated uh, moderation or any automated democracy, uh, a very uh, doubtful way of finding decision. But you mentioned Facebook, uh, and that brings another concern because on Facebook uh, news feed, um, you do not, you nearly do not make decisions on what do you see. Mark Zuckerberg decides what will be shown to you uh, among these other advertisements, among these recommendations, um, because uh, um, for uh, Facebook, you are the good. So that's uh, trying to sell to the advertisers and something. And that's another issue because we nearly, uh, um, not all, but many sessions here are deciding about algorithmic accountability, including these algorithms. And uh, uh, this is also a concern of free speech, uh, because if uh, on such big platforms you are not deciding what do you see. Uh, there was a real huge advancement when uh, websites uh, started using RSS technology for providing their news in a machine readable form, and so you you can configure your own RSS uh, feed uh, to get that content that you want. But as uh, far as I feel, a few years ago, sites stopped doing this because this is stalling their advertisement money. Uh, and they will start working on Facebook-like things. So they show you what do they want to show you. Uh, and uh, this is another uh, thing we should mention in this about this digital era. Uh, because uh, you no longer or very difficult can uh, access information what do you want and, and again that's another issue because one of the previous speakers uh, said about uh, distributed moderation teams or something like uh, no it does not work uh, because um, there is a, a beautiful uh, federative technology uh, realized it, I think, in uh, Mattermost or something like so, where the um, uh, federation of possible charts uh, was realized. But uh, this technology, as I started with bots, uh, uh, as and as any other technology, uh, are usually being used by uh, evil actors. So this federated uh, chat system started uh, being used by Nazis. They first found that the, if they are being banned from Twitter, Facebook, and, and something like, they started using this uh, federated systems. And as far as I remember, the Google and Apple start removing uh, applications, realizing the uh, clients of such systems. Um, 
so it's another concern because any technological things back back to first point are usually being used by evil actors first like all these financial systems credit cards we know then um, whatever else are being used by cheaters of uh, if if uh, previously actually they reacted on you when you have money uh, when you are wealthy target now uh, internet allows uh, them to spread uh, um, the illegal, illegal activity along the whole internet and big corporations have to protect themselves or protect you so that's uh, also we, we have to reinterpret this somehow still 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 not clear we do not have representative of huge corporations here just to hear them but maybe we could raise such concerns to them during our other sessions or our own communications with them uh, thank you uh, for the answer okay um any other responses or new questions that you would like to throw in the ring uh, concerning free speech and digital times? Uh, for those who came late, uh, we don't have a, uh, the foreseen moderator and the panelists, so the session is up on, on us and uh, just trying to make good use of the space provided here. Hmm. Okay. Okay. The question was, uh, if it, this is not uh, audible, uh, if there are people here in, present in the room who come from countries with restricted uh, free speech, uh, free speech violations, or who have experience with this, maybe who would like to could raise his or her hand. Uh, well, I can say Mexico is one of the most dangerous places for exercise journalists, which we have like uh, each 12 hours an aggression towards a, a journalist who exercised the right to freedom of expression. And we have also a government which is uh, stigmatizing and eroding public uh, debate uh, by also <laughs> pointing out to like journalists and when someone makes a critic to the government, they are like pointed, pointed out and they are like, uh, like the blaming and shaming uh, and then we have like this huge and massive response in in the like a viral attacks towards towards journalists and and a way of yeah looking to to silence them. And we recently have uh, when when what they were mentioning about Baya was mentioning about like regulating. I was thinking there was an attempt in Mexico to regulate social media platforms, but they were doing like such in a bad way that they were saying like, okay, now we have like this uh, regulator, telecommunication regulator, and he's going to be in charge to uh, take down fake news. And it's like, okay, what is fake news? We actually don't know. They, they use this very vague and broad uh, concept and they have to take down all the uh, hate messages. And again, it was like, okay, what do you mean by hate messages? Because fake news can be something that a journalist is investigating and he is like revealing something of a public interest, but it might be, uh, and it might be uh, like a true story, but sometimes the governments are just like uh, hiding uh, or uh, uh, looking for a way to take down this, uh, this information by saying that it is, that it is uh, fake news to the opponents or uh, or those who are critics and it's in the same way for 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 hate messages it was like what you are considering a hate message we like we were like saying uh, from article 19 it's like we have to be very careful because when you are thinking about freedom of expression there are like certain uh, types of expression that are protected some offensive uh, languages are protected some uh, perturbant messages are, are protected because you have satire, because you have like uh, uh, political cartoons and some other things that might be not uh, according to your beliefs, but they are like uh, being protected. So when you are saying uh, hate messages, sometimes it's it can be tricky or it can be like, yeah, uh, really 
uh, warring uh, approach. And that we have in other countries in, in Latin America. In Brazil, they have a discussion on fake, uh, also on a bill on, on fake, news, fake news on the same way, uh, reminding also that Bolsonaro is uh, one of these presidents that attacks constantly to, to the critical media. In Chile, they have also this uh, discussion. That's why the Inter-American Human Rights Commission was like, okay, we have like first to think about what should be like this, the standards for companies and for states and how they should approach in order not to restrict more uh, society that historically, historically has been like, yeah, fighting for their freedoms and fighting for, uh, and, and, and free speech, like shaping their, uh, uh, their democracy. So I think just like to point out that there is like this complexity also when we are approaching certain thematics as it can be disinformation or as it can be uh, hate speech because yeah, sometimes this can be used by governments in the opposite way uh, uh, and not in the- uh, Exactly the same situation with Russia, by the way. Uh, and uh, I think technological means and legality means uh, are a bit different in Russia than in Mexico and Latin America. Uh, but uh, as I said, uh, Evil actors, even governmental actors, starts abusing internet. The first, if maybe democratic countries like United States, hope democratic country or France, uh, are self healing in this case, uh, the non democratic countries try tries to protect democracy with very evil things, because uh, for for example, in Russian regulations related to uh, hate speech in comments. Uh, making uh, existence of uh, official uh, of um, not official uh, licensed media uh, life uh, very difficult if they have comments to their articles. So media just uh, turning off possibility to comment any articles on their websites, or another thing of evil uh, actions of governments protecting democracy, protecting quoted uh, is that. Um, one of the Russian requirements uh, is actually to keep, um, to de-anonymize de com uh, commenters. We, we are some technological things like state services websites with official logins and something like, or uh, giving possibility for bulk wiretapping for law enforcement agencies, just in protection of democracy against not hate speech, hate speech is not very popular thing uh, to fight with by Russian government, but to protect people from terrorist or extremist content. So that's uh, not, not just hate speech, but hate speech based on nationality or origins. So yes, in different countries with strange regimes, maybe legal and uh, technical means different by the purposes and uh, especially consequences for the free speech are the same. And by the way, uh, I, even we took, our, uh, took over this session, I see there is at, uh, at least 10 participants online. So dear online participants, feel free to ask questions or raise hands, I'm monitoring Zoom session. So you, you will uh, have possibility to speak also. Yeah, and maybe to share so it, uh, we don't have to go to, to Russia or Mexico, I think so freedom of speech is under threat in uh, uh, most of the countries. So there are uh, minor restrictions in many places. In France, if I'm well informed, uh, you cannot access certain pages just because of or, or torrent technology is, is banned. So uh, uh, just uh, uh, per se uh, without any discussion. So you could also question this kind of measures or in, in Germany, there was a large debate about upload filters. Uh, so uh, since the providers are made responsible for the content or the platforms, uh, sometimes they will take down uh, informations uh, from those spaces uh, that are uh, protected by uh, 
uh, the, the Free Speech Act. So uh, what happens then? How can they be empowered uh, to do something uh, like this? And you as a, as a user are not in a, in a position to, to react. So uh, there's also a shrinking uh, space of, uh, of freedom of speech that you can see in, in, in different countries in different contexts. And uh, maybe some of you would like to, to share another example of this or has another question. We had example from France, from Poland. So don't be shy. Even if you are really pleased by what your government does uh, or what's happening in your country with the freedom of speech, just give us positive example. Don't be shy. A any voice to be heard. It's IGF. Uh, hi. Uh, I don't know if I can be heard. Yes, we uh, hear you. Okay, uh, so I'm I'm a master student from um, Rye University in Brussels. Uh, I'm attending a class related. Uh, I'm a digital communication student, and I'm attending an internet censorship course. Uh, me and my colleague are writing a paper about self censorship, um, specifically a case study in the U.S. and China. I we were wondering about uh, your thoughts on how. Um, self-censorship is uh, being um, uh, how digital platforms is um, shaping the climate of these two countries. Uh, any 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 thoughts on that? Because we we are uh, we we are doing uh, like pre preliminary research, and we've we've cited UN Declaration of Human Rights. And I've also done a little bit of research on the U.S. side, where um, I, I know that um, platforms are not legally liable to um, to what the to what people are actually saying online. So there's a thrive of hate speech, and um, but there's also echo chambers in that aspect because um, you can only um, you're you're only listen. You only you can you can actually. Um, choose what to listen to in in these platforms, but on on the other side of the world, China, uh, we, we're uh, we're wondering about uh, how um, how the the country is uh, managing this. So um, any feedback on that would be appreciated. Thanks for the question. Anyone from US? Maybe online. Maybe somebody who knows real situation in China or United States. Um, I, could, I already talked about that, but uh, I could give examples about self-censorship in European countries, like what we uh, witness uh, from our members of the network. So this uh, hashtag I am, I am here network, uh, it's normal people. It's like uh, everyday people, you know, men and women of all ages, of all uh, political um, inclinations, uh, mostly women actually, and uh, it, it really falls in line recently when there were the Facebook papers uh, from uh, and all the revelations from Francis uh, Haugen. Uh, we were not surprised that among these revelations, there were this Facebook study, uh, internal study showing that their users were self-censoring for most of them. And, uh, and, and often it's women or um, uh, categories that are targeted uh, by, in, in online spaces. So uh, LGBTQ community, for example, uh, uh, people, people of color who are attacked. Um, and so, yeah, self-censorship is real. It's everywhere. And um, we always, you know, we always talk about this right of freedom of speech, but there's another right. That there are several rights, human rights that exist. And there's another right, which is the right to safety. It's like you, you, you have your right to safety, uh, let's say, as a woman of color, uh, is not less important than, than the right to freedom of speech of a, a white male, for example. Uh, so 
yeah, this is really something to take into account, and 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 it's great. I'm I'm super uh, happy to learn that there is uh, uh, you're doing this uh, research about uh, censorship because it's uh, it's so important. It's happening everywhere, uh, and we need to better assess this and 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 bring back citizens to online spaces and uh, and you know, uh, so. Definitely in all the countries, we are in like 18 countries, we see that uh, all the testimonies we get is like, I didn't have courage to go online because I'm going to be attacked, I'm going to be uh, threatened, uh, I'm going to be humiliated, um, I'm going to face digital violence. And we know that digital violence first targets women. Uh, so th this is really a huge issue to, to tackle. Uh, Radessa, maybe you already have uh, some uh, results of your research and you can share with us. Um, yeah, I just, uh, I'll look it up, but uh, just to give a feedback on what, um, um, what was said, um, I agree that um, we're, we're looking at, um, because I, I, I think uh, it's, despite the fact that uh, we claim that there are democratic countries, um, the, the fact that people are um, conforming to what um, the majority, um, like, like for example, in the, in the case of the US where um, there are instances where um, people are silenced or placed in a certain um, like conformity because, um, because they don't want to, um, so so we're we're looking at that, but uh, let me look at my my file. I don't know if um, I can um, if I can. Um, so um, essentially, I don't know um, because this might be too, too theoretical. But uh, we're using a pathetic dot theory as a framework. Uh, we're looking at um, the four aspects of um, um, free speech legislation, the restrictions of law, the norms, which in this case, U.S. versus, uh, not versus, but like U.S. and, and, and China, the different, uh, the, how this, how norms can influence human behavior in the digital platforms. Um, we're also looking at platform terms and conditions in the market. Um, we specifically chose U.S. and China because they're, um, they're home to, um, uh, to some of the biggest platforms, um, GAFAM, Google, um, Amazon, and on the other side, um, um, Alibaba, B BATX, um, Tencent. So, um, so we're looking at case studies. Um, but uh, yeah, we were, were we're here to actually more hopefully learn more from the panelists. Um, but yeah, so uh, we're also looking at. Um, Panopticon theory, um, where um, people in this case platforms, um, in, in platforms you you kind of um, learn how to self-regulate your expression um, because you you fear like you're being watched all the time in platforms. Whatever you say will um, can be recorded or or traced back to you. So we're also looking at um, those theories and frameworks and um, comparing the the cultural aspects um, of that and how it impacts um, how how healthy a citizen can actually um, like enter debates in platforms. Um, yeah. So perhaps, yeah, uh, thank you, Rodessa. Uh, I think it's really great. Some Something that we have seen in, in Latin America and, and in Mexico, uh, and perhaps I'm gonna think of like three cases. The first is the creation of like silence zones, or that's what, 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 what we call silent zones in which the extreme violence against journalists, basically it's like a chilling effect or a self-censorship to, to them to basically cover anything related to, uh, uh, to the organized crime or to uh, drug dealing in, the, uh, in a certain state or corruption or uh, the things that are going. So it's like uh, journalists that just like stop doing their work because they're like facing uh, threats because they're like facing uh, risk uh, security. So we have like big states just like being uh, silenced. The other thing I was like uh, uh, thinking is uh, 
and perhaps related to uh, one of the last uh, comments, how women journalists, when they are also like uh, publishing investigative uh, journalistic pieces and when they are uh, stigmatized and when they are like uh, pointing out pointing out by the president in, in our country, uh, they are like facing these viral hate and viral uh, aggressions. And when I was like interviewing some of, of, of these women journalists, they were like, you know, I have to quit from, I have to just like uh, uh, remove Twitter or remove any social media, uh, just like take back. And now think twice when I'm like conducting uh, an, an, an investigation or, or when I'm like uh, publishing. So that also like creates this, uh, yeah, great uh, self-censorship of not expressing. After a time and after uh, a certain period of, of moment, I think also counter narratives are very important. Solidarity is very important and how other uh, journalists and other women journalists also create a network to support. I think that's super uh, important, super vital. And, and the last thing is also how certain uh, legislation can create self-censorship and how uh, certain legislation can limit freedom of expression, can, can limit, uh, because if you say something, you are going to be criminalized, or if you say something, you are going to have like a, a fine or uh, you are going to put in jail. Just to mention recently, there was like some uh, decrees uh, approved in, in Cuba, decree number 35 and resolution 102, which has like this chilling effect and this self-censorship effect. Like if you are going to use social media to publish something against the government, you are going to be persecuted and you are going to be criminalized. So it's like trying to put you an indirect way of uh, silencing you. It's like uh, uh, perhaps they're not going to be, well, in the case of Cuba, they're going to be out of your house, uh, also like restricting uh, you right to, to movement, but it's like also thinking on how uh, certain legislations can or uh, can push for uh, self censorship. Uh, and let me continue um, uh, the uh, issues of digital era and uh, self censorship, uh, because uh, in pre digital era, if you said something on the streets or uh, in your kitchen, uh, it might be forgotten very soon. But in digital era, uh, anything you said uh, is stored forever. We definitely know the cases of a lot of people canceled for uh, racist or uh, uh, male chauvinist statements in the United States. Uh, so uh, they did it in Twitter years ago, uh, then they became politician and now they have issues. But uh, that's, uh, let's say, a light cases. Because in Russia now, we have some criminal charges arise at the, uh, against people who said or written something uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Uh, and it's done very easy way uh, because there is a, 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 one of the most cases uh, is stupid song about terrorist act of Nord Nordost by, well, then, uh, then uh, stand-up comedian. When we know the stand-up comedians are not very smart some cases. So he wrote this song and uh, put a clip on YouTube well in 2012. But nowadays, uh, e even that uh, time out for criminal cases already passed for this case, uh, there, there was a kind of victim controlled by uh, Russian law enforcement uh, watched this video clip this year or year ago and this criminal charge realized. So that's a guy who forgot that he wrote the stupid song, who bring apologizes 10 years ago together with this thing. Now he's in jail. And this is an example that uh, everyone will really think many, many times before they uh, express themselves. So that's another concern of freedom of speech in digital era. Anything you said, will be recorded and you never know how it will be interpreted in 10 years and 20 years. Okay, I see you. Uh, uh, I just to remind that because organizers of this session have not shown up, uh, we just took over this session. And well, if you have 
something to express about changing freedom of speech in digital era, please feel free to join us. I see our colleague from Finland and from Armenia. So if you think that there are concerns in your country, or there is no concerns in your country, and you have no experience, please feel free to express. We know the example from Russia, Mexico, Poland, France, US and China. Uh, I'm Liana from Armenia. Yeah, I will share a little bit of concern about the freedom of speech. Uh, it's not like the situation uh, as in Cuba, as you described, but uh, lately we have um, kind of not criminalized, but kind of bad situation with uh, saying something bad against the government. It's concerned mostly on a hate speech uh, in that uh, framing the, the word. But uh, mostly, yes, they uh, those who say some bad words um, and a hate speech regarding the government, uh, they, th those cases are being uh, charged, uh, penalty, some, some money penalty over them, and uh, for the media as well. So uh, the media, they need to think um, a lot more before putting something uh, over their websites or their um, their pages and also that concerns to the comments as we know in the social media people like to put comments over the the, the articles uh, the, the situation that is described so that is being charged for the editors of that uh, media so they need to somehow um, well, censorship or something like that, or moderation, uh, post-moderation. Um, when they see some uh, hate speech that's coming out in the, in the comments, they, they put that down. Um, I don't know whether this is good or bad, but this is the situation and uh, the concern. Definitely, um, I agree with you that um, nowadays in the digital uh, era, we need to think um, very carefully what we put there. Uh, and uh, for the future years to come. Um, I am sorry for that situation that um, comes out uh, from the very, very late um, uh, past, because you never know what will happen uh, in 10 years uh, afterwards and what laws would be there. So I would say, uh, anyway, we as a new uh, generation of this digital era, we need to be careful, yes, really, what we say and do in this way. Thank you. OK, uh, thank you for your um, contribution. And uh, yeah. So like in the digital space, for example, we don't have a way in a way to, to, to like get together, like strike or, or make a protest, you know? And during the pandemic times, I think it's even more important. Like a year ago, uh, Polish government made abortion law more like a decision that made abortion law more restrictive. Uh, in Poland, and people uh, have gathered and protested in, in uh, on the streets of Warsaw uh, and other other cities. But uh, and they like the government and, and police, of course, tried to uh, destroy the, the the gathering. But I think uh, in in some way it wasn't safe because of the pandemic. It was especially uh, during the fall. So. Uh, it was uh, the peak of the uh, second, I think, wave of uh, coronavirus. And uh, my question was: Do you do and like do any of you from different countries have a good example of a gathering uh, in the digital space that was seen, but by someone else than uh, than people interested? You know, because if you go on the street, then everyone sees you. Yeah, okay. Um, first of all, let me give uh, another negative example from Russia uh, related to freedom of association, coronavirus, and freedom of speech together. Because in digital era, we have a lot of cases and rights collected. So uh, a lot of people, um, opposition leaders, I think, of different levels, middle levels, uh, got uh, uh, 
fined or arrested uh, for violating coronavirus regulation uh, because of uh, retweeting or posting something about uh, opposition rallies on the streets. So somebody posts photo, okay, we uh, have now protest meeting against arrest of Mr. Navalny on the streets of Moscow. And he's being charged for coronavirus restrictions as organizer of illegal gathering. See, see the stress, yeah? So it's, it's kind of, uh, uh, he's realizing his freedom of speech telling about what's happening, but being, uh, being fined for violating uh, coronavirus restrictions. Uh, so that's a negative example of how evil regime could abuse it. But I can give you a positive example also from Russia, uh, because during pa uh, previous pandemic years, uh, there was organized a virtual protests on the Yandex maps. Uh, so uh, you well, you're using uh, your navigation system on a smartphone. Uh, I think also Google allows this uh, it's using ways. Uh, you you can not not no, not only just mark uh, an accident, but you can also start chat with geo geolocation. So so just put your message on the map. Uh, and uh, I think uh, in May previous year also there was organized a kind of protest, and a lot of people was uh, putting their messages around Kremlin in Moscow, stating that they don't like. Uh, coronavirus restrictions and pressurizing of opposition. But unfortunately, after that, uh, uh, Yandex have modified the application, so they you have to be in exact location where you're putting your message. But there was such example also of safe gathering. <laughs> yeah, and I can, uh, now recently, Colombia has a good example of perhaps like a combination of uh, protest in, on the, st in the streets, but also like a very significant uh, protest, digital protest, using hashtags, uh, using social media uh, apps. Uh, uh, I was also like uh, sharing, uh, documenting uh, police uh, abuse. So basically also complementing the uh, exercise of, of digital protest in, uh, uh, in the streets. Cuba is another great example on 11th of July, uh, part of the protest and the historical protest that they have in the streets, take part also with SOS Cuba in, uh, in the digital uh, field. So that's also a good, another good example. And feminist uh, collectives and feminist uh, groups in, in Mexico and all over Latin America they are such a great example on how digital protest really works when they are like fighting against femicides, when they're fighting for, uh, uh, for their rights. I think that's another good example on how it creates a, a massive wave, digital massive wave uh, all over Latin America to uh, reivindicate uh, certain, uh, certain rights. And I think we're going to expect to see uh, these types and, and sometimes very creative ways of uh, using as, as, in, as in Russia and, and other countries to really like drive the, uh, the attention and put their, uh, their demands to, to the states. Hey, um, my name is uh, Raul, um, working for the Electronic Frontier Finland. Um, can give you two examples from Finland, uh, which are quite recent. Uh, the other one uh, was a case where uh, one of the members of the parliament who is in the, on the Christian, Christian religion party, um, uh, they basically, the, sort of the chair of the party, um, put out some hate speech against gay people. And in doing that, uh, she used, uh, just to quote from the Bible, and uh, that uh, she actually got a judge for that. And um, I think that's sort of fair enough because that's actually attacking minorities. We have a law in Finland that you can't attack minorities with, with speech or sort of um, aggravate people to violence, for example, for against minorities. Uh, and uh, another one 
which was a really bizarre one. Uh, there was a there was a journalist. Well, there's basically a, an openly very racist person uh, who became a council member in one of the northern cities in Finland, and um, uh, this council member was called out by a journalist who called him a Nazi, and uh, they actually um, he actually made a uh, like a he he sued uh, the journalist for saying that. And uh, that actually, um, that's already been tried in uh, two uh, levels of, of uh, uh, courts. And there's only the high, highest one left, uh, but already like basically she got judged twice for calling that Nazi a Nazi. So, uh, so we are talking about possible abuses uh, done by people in power. Well, for example, this last example, it's, it's I, I think it's a scary example in the way that, I mean, if you can't call Nazi a Nazi, uh, <laughs> that's that's kind of stifling for, for the freedom of speech. And, and you know, even if you quote uh, a religious text, it doesn't allow you to, to attack minorities. Yeah, that's that's real, but, but this I think is a cultural issue. So that will be changed a lot. A lot, a lot of things changed since uh, even previous century. Not, not, not since nineteenth century. We which we have to take in account. Um, okay, uh, this screen shows that we have uh, six minutes left of this session. So m maybe uh, some wrap ups. It was really great <laughs> to take. <laughs> We, 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 I think we made like a different uh, from 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 digital protests to hate speech to challenges of uh, freedom of expression uh, to human rights perspectives and 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 different uh, context. Uh, so yeah, I think it was really great. Thank you for uh, for opening the and moderate uh, the 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 space. So yeah, just like. Uh, getting other perspective and other uh, another ideas that I think there are uh, need to continue the discussion. Yeah, thanks a lot for the opportunity to, to discuss. Uh, sorry for the old male uh, makeshift uh, panel. So next time we'll do better, <laughs> bring some females. But uh, but yeah, no, no, it's really interesting to be able to discuss all that really uh, in all these countries uh, sharing this this experience I, I think we we have a lot of uh, food for our thoughts so thanks a lot yeah uh, thanks a lot uh, because uh we raise it a lot of concerns uh, and exchange it experience seeing that in some cases our experience are the same uh in some cases they are completely different and uh, as a part of igf we have to continue this discussion because uh, even somebody uh, complies that IJF doesn't make decisions or doesn't make clear statements, but even in these discussions, maybe we are moving forward to understanding what we have to do. And I hope we will understand uh, to do without well, greater repressions and greater wars just because we are able to discuss it. Well, um, many things were already said, maybe just one last comment, at least here in the room, uh, it seems that we are a, a full civil society panel, or is here anyone or uh, who is representing uh, corporate uh, interests or, or governments, and uh, if not, then, uh, yeah, let's take this also uh, as a, uh, not, I don't know if it's a lesson, but uh, in this debate about free speech, as we heard, it's uh, multi-stakeholder approach is also needed and uh, that uh, there should be a common interest on defending uh, such uh, uh, principles of, uh, of, of living together and I think it's not uh, a good idea uh, to only push this on uh, civil society but there should be more interest from the other sides also to, to be here and maybe as an invitation for uh, future uh, sessions on panels also on the IGF. Uh, so yeah, governments and corporates uh, are welcome. And uh, yeah, uh, thank you all. I don't know if there are other comments from uh, the people who are following online. Uh, if not, also thanks for the technicians and the people who uh, helped to make this uh, possible. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. Thanks. Thank